This is section 4.4, Shape of a Graph. In this video, we're going to go through number 41 in your book. This, and this question is really asking a lot of things. It's asking us to find the critical point, points of inflection, the concavity, and the maxes and mins of this function. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to find are critical points. Remember, this is wherever the first derivative is equal to 0. So let's find the first derivative. f prime of x is equal to 3x squared minus 4x plus 1. Now we need to take this function, set it equal to 0. And as you see, we have a quadratic, so that means we'll need to factor it down. So we have 3x here and x. Uh, we want a negative in the middle, so this will become x minus 1 and 3x, sorry. Oops, yeah, 3x minus 1 here as well. And when we set this equal to 0 and solve for x, we get that x equals 1 third and x equals 1. So these are our critical points. All right, first one, check. Step two, find our points of inflection. Remember, points of inflection, that's wherever the second derivative equals zero. So now we'll just take the second derivative and we get that f double prime of x is equal to 6x minus 4. Setting this equal to zero and solving for x, we get that x is equal to 4 over 6 or 2 thirds. And this is my point of inflection. Check. Okay, now intervals of concavity. That's dealing with my points of inflection. So I'm gonna go over here, make my number line. I only have one point of inflection. Um, and now I'm gonna put in test points on either side of my point of inflection into my second derivative to determine uh, the concavity of my original function. So 2 thirds is my uh, point of inflection. I can have a test point x equals zero and x equals two. Remember, I'm only worried about the sign. So when I plug zero into my second derivative, I get 0 minus 4, this will be negative. And when I plug 2 into my second derivative, I get 12 minus 4, that'll be positive. So that tells me that f of x, my original function, is concave down on this interval because f double prime is negative, and it's concave up on this second interval from 2 thirds to infinity. All right, have my intervals. And last step, I need to find my maxes and mins. Okay. There's a couple ways you could find your maxes and mins. I'm going to go ahead and do the second derivative test um, because I already have my critical points, already have my second derivative, not too much more work. So remember, second derivative test, change colors again. Um, you take your critical points, plug them into your second derivative, and look at the sign. So my critical points, remember, are one, 1 over 3 and 1. So f double prime of 1 over 3. I'm just worried about whether it's positive or negative. 6 times 1 over 3 leaves me with 2 minus 4. This will be negative. And f double prime of my other critical point of 1 will be 6 minus 4. That's a positive value. And remember, if I have a negative for my second derivative test, that means that this is a maximum. And if I have a positive value when I plug in my critical point into my second derivative, that means that this is a minimum. Okay, let's consolidate all of our answers into one convenient little box over here. So the first part they're asking for is my critical points. My critical points I found set by uh, taking my first derivative, setting it equal to zero, and I got that my critical points are x equals one third and x equals one. My points of inflection I found by taking my second derivative, setting that equal to zero, and I got that my points of inflection was just x equals two over three. My concavity I found by putting test points on either side of my point of inflection, uh, putting it into my second derivative and looking at the sign. And when I did that, I got that f of x was concave down on the interval negative infinity to 2 thirds, and it was concave up on the interval 2 thirds to positive infinity. And last thing, to find my maxes and mins, I did the second derivative test, and I plugged my critical points into my second derivative and looked at the sign. Remember, if I did that and I got a negative, that meant that that critical point is a maximum. And if I got a positive, that meant that that critical point is a minimum. So when I did that, I got that my max is at x equals one third, and my minimum is at x equals positive one. And that's it for this problem. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts covered in this video are true no matter what calculus class you're in, but all the sections and problems I referenced were from this textbook right here. And remember that if you're a registered Baylor student, 
We offer free tutoring on the first floor of Sid Rich. You can either schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment online or just drop in whenever you're available during our business hours for free tutoring. For more information, feel free to visit our website.